Now, how about changing hospitals and your new doctor not having to ask you about your medical history or receiving prescription from your doctor only to get to the pharmacy to know that the pharmacist is already aware and has prepared your medications in advance? Or visiting the lab to realize your lab scientist or technician has already received the doctor's request and are prepared for your test. That and more is what UK-based tech giant MedTech Solutions is working to introduce to Ghana's healthcare landscape. But don't take my word for it. Let's get them and their partners in Ghana to help us understand how this will change healthcare delivery in Ghana. And I'm already excited by this. Now in studio with me to share this excitement with you is Dr. Jean Araba Yangsen in Sia. And I have a story to tell about this lady's mother, but I'll, I'll talk about it later. Occupational health physician, and she's executive director for Scope Plus Group. They are based in Tema. Uh, also in the studio is Isabel Uguchuku. Okay, so she pronounced it well, so I had to take my time to get it right. She's CEO of MedTech Solutions. Ladies, hi, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I hope all is well. Now, this is such a groundbreaking thing for me to hear that I'll no longer have to go and sit in front of my doctor in Agran Kwanta, for example, where I'm from, mm -hmm. and tell him, oh, doc, uh, hi, I'm here, or, hi, I'm here. The doctor already is aware. Uh, I mean, how is this going to work? Just share a bit of it with us. All right. Thanks for having us. Mm. So essentially, mm. um, I, I work with Scope Plus Group, mm. which is um, an info solutions based occupational health company. So what we do is we manage employee health, and we are an indigenous company. Now, we use technology to manage employee health, and we have found that it has become so valuable in providing efficient services. And so we, have col we are collaborating with our partners, MedTech Solutions in the UK, to make sure that technology is spread across the healthcare landscape in Ghana. So the whole point of what we are trying to do is to make sure that healthcare becomes more efficient, becomes digitalized, and is able to conform with global standards. We are trying to ensure that the Ghanaian patient is at the receiving end of the best quality care mm. in a safe, secure, digitalized manner. So at this point, uh, Isabel is going to tell us about how exactly we are going to break this down mm. and make sure that the Ghanaian patient mm. becomes the biggest beneficiary mm. of this innovative mm. healthcare solution. Okay, wonderful. There is a, the wall is in your court. So sure. let's understand how it's going to be. So what we are creating mm -hmm. is, in fact, a house with several windows, right? Inside the house is a digital ecosystem. The patient has an app, the health professional has an app, the health establishment has an app. The government can see anonymized, aggregated, national level data that enables them to more effectively um, go about with the health initiatives. And this means that the patients can take control of their health in partnership with their health professional in a way like never before. Well, so, I mean, have, have we, do we even have the idea of probably when this is, I mean, to do a test run, because I'm sure you're going to start from somewhere yes. before you can do a large scale rollout. Yes. So this is what brings us to Ghana. And uh, tonight we're hosting um, a networking uh, dinner with stakeholders in the industry. Mm. And we've got government, IGO, NGO, hospital owners, managers, health professionals. And then tomorrow we're having an all-day workshop to really dive in and do breakout sessions with them and really understand in order to really tailor the product mm. so that the market fit is really great. And so we're looking to then start the rollout in the latter part of this year and onboard several health um, facilities one at a time. Mm. And then their patients will get an app that they can follow their own medical records and then the health professionals working with them will have an app that they can do their work mm. with, whether they're based in a hospital or even remote, mm. and then afterwards it will upload onto the system. Oh, so it, there's going to be an app? Yes. Which means that not everybody can, 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 can be part then, because what about my grandmother in the village? Who uh, I've got there? an answer for that. So okay. it, it, because generally in more rural places there will be one person who has a smartphone per family within the application, you will be able to create profiles for yourself, your partner, your elderly parents, dependents, your children. And that means that the profiles of all your family can be on the one space. And then the custodian of the phone will then be the, the person who will then accompany that family member mm. um, to the, the health professional, to the establishment. Okay. So, so there won't be a way, for example, that if I don't have an, um, you know, a phone that can help me get access to an app, mm -hmm. there's no USSD code or something that 
can also work. So there, there, there is, and that'll be tied into the payment section. So even if you don't have a phone today, mm -hmm. you can access it on a web portal through someone can help you. You can get printouts, mm -hmm. you can have things sent to an email. So there's lots of different ways to be able to enable every member of a family to really grasp the benefits that come with this application. Mm -hmm. This is interesting, but obviously it has, it has to do with tech. You're using internet and all of that. So someone has to pay. Who's paying? The client or the patient or who? <laughs> So the health establishments uh, will be uh, obviously subscribing and then we will be um, providing at the national and international level anonymized um, aggregated data. So for example, the government will have a dashboard which will offer and they'll be able to see gender, age range, region, that's it. So we'll be able to know how many births, how many deaths, they'll be able to see, oh, you know, there's so, so many people with an illness in this region that's higher and using data analytics will be able to compare mm. what's beyond the norm and really give you real-time view of mm. what's happening in the, across the healthcare landscape mm. and obviously for IGOs and NGOs that information is important too because then it enables them to tailor their healthcare initiatives and distribute their resources in a more equitable way based on where the real need is whereas right now a lot a lot of the data going up is very manual is very hit and miss and there's no technological infrastructure that allows what they actually need today. So that's why we're coming with that. Mm. So, so it means that this will serve more than one purpose. Yes. It's going to help us really determine the numbers of people who are suffering from certain kind of yes. illnesses. Yes, exactly. Like Vaccination okay. uptakes, mm. Mm. births, um, male births, female mm. births, and so on and so forth. Okay. So whereas maybe before resources for healthcare would have been distributed, distributed made in, made, um, based on population ratio, mm. Mm. now you'll be able to see actually the need mm. is greatest in this place, mm. whereas we wouldn't have seen that before. Okay. I don't know why I'm excited already, but, but you tell me and other those who are watching, why is this so crucial and important to healthcare delivery in this country? The, the reason why we are super excited about this mm. innovation is because one, it's going to bridge the data gap that we have. Mm. The truth is you can't take decisions if you don't have data. If you don't know the state of health of your population, then it's difficult to actually take decisions that are going to revolutionize how your population's health mm. status is. And so the data analytics part of this seriously excites us. We also want to be able to predict. Mm. So it's not good enough to know that 50% of the people who walk into your OPD are hypertensive. Mm. You need to be able to predict that in the next two years, yes. mm -hmm. what kind of numbers am I expecting? And so it's so important to us because we see that this gives Ghana an opportunity to be at the forefront of health tech. This mm. isn't being done anywhere else in the world. Really? We, are, we are going beyond Ghana with this, and Ghana is sort of our first stop for us to really get interactions with the stakeholders here. Mm. This is for us, even though our partners are from the UK, we see it as a homegrown solution. That's mm -hmm. why we are here to interact directly with the stakeholders. Let them tell us what is their ideal healthcare system. What do they want to see? So that when this thing rolls out, we are all on board. Mm, it's, it's exciting to hear. I mean, I mean, the country being able to foretell how the health status of the people will be in the next two years, three years, it informs even policy. So I guess then it's, it's something that we're going to tap on. You wanted to add something? Yeah, there? and also, mm. I mean, there's benefits for the economy, right? Mm. When people have better and more equitable access to healthcare and healthcare management, mm. when they feel that they're also in the driving seat and partnering with their local hospital and their local health practitioners, they become more invested in their own health. And that then leads in terms of the healthcare improving. Mm. A healthier workforce is a more productive workforce, is more money for the economy, and that will create, bring, generate investment into the your in, into the the you know the country and so that for you know there's definitely much downstream mm. in positive impact that this could have on the country mm. i mean you're saying that this is ghana is the first country to have this why this decision why why, why is ghana the first country not anywhere else but here All right so tell you what we've been working on this for quite a while mm. and there has been um, a lot of engagement in the background mm. And we realized from our preliminary engagement that this environment is ready for this. We have some systems in place, but they don't solve all our tech problems in healthcare. Mm. And the feedback we are getting from the various stakeholders, the private facilities association, the state agencies, the NGOs, look, it is 
people are ready for this, people are interested in this. They are so excited about our program, which is happening tonight and tomorrow morning. That's when we are having the brainstorming session. People have signed up and are ready to come and share their ideas on what they want to mm. see. Ghana is a fertile land for technology. Mm. We are already doing a bit all over the country. I know we are using tech with you know, the zipline deliveries and things like that. And so this country already is on a road map mm. to success when it comes to medical technology. It's mm. the right place to start. And we know that at the end of our two day program, we are, we are ready to zoom and launch ahead mm. and to innovate and bring this product on board by the end of the year. Mm. Interesting. Um, exciting news for all of us here that soon uh, you'll be able to, even if you're a policy maker, for example, you'll be able to tell that in the next three years, my country is going to have more obese uh, patient and therefore this is the sort of thing that a country needs to do. And, and, and it'll, help, it'll help really policymakers, for example, and you, because when you go to your doctor, before you even say, your doctor is aware of what's wrong with you. That, that's it, right? That's mm -hmm. it. Where, does it where, does, where will it begin? For example, take, take, use me as an example. Mm -hmm. Maybe I go to, I, I, my hospital is a Kolebu. Mm -hmm. How do you start to ensure that my, the doctor in my hometown, Agunankwanta, or Buzia, or Disco, mm -hmm. is aware that, well, this is what is wrong with Kojobri, so before I get to him, he knows. So if you already have an existing condition, mm -hmm. you would have had a referral. Mm -hmm. And so the referral would have come from another health practitioner, another doctor, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that, and that will link you to that other doctor. Mm -hmm. And so, but if you're coming green, you can choose which hospital you can search, you can choose by a function of what they offer. Then on, you, on the app. Yes, mm -hmm. and the licensed, actively licensed health practitioner will be registered when we onboard the health facility. Mm. So the health facility will say, we've got ex-doctors, midwives, nurses, etc. And so you will see, you can have remote consultations if you can't make it. For example, your elderly parents who live in a more rural place, you can take your phone, they'll have remote consultations if they can't make it. If you can, you go. And it matches using near-field technology. So then your doctor creates the record. Mm. It's, it's confidential between you and your doctor, yeah. no one else sees that. Mm -hmm. And what, what goes up to the health establishment is not your records. It's the information that they need to run the hospital. So the only person that has view access is you. Your doctor has edit access. Mm -hmm. And even if they then edit it afterwards, you will get a notification to tell you what they've edited. Mm -hmm. So it's a level of accountability, transparency mm -hmm. and that we've never had before. Mm -hmm. And it's super exciting. Mm -hmm. But then it brings up one thing. This is confidential. Yes. That is also technology. You know how people can manipulate technology yes. and get access to information. Yes. What's the assurance that my information is yes. protected? So the assurance is that we're going to be using blockchain technology to mm -hmm. anonymize in a gated way that is irreversible mm -hmm. the anonymization of your confidential information. Mm -hmm. So once it's gone past you and your doctor, no one will know who you are. Your name will be scrubbed out. So the health facility will know we've got X patients, X amount of illnesses, X amount of incidences of this, but they will not be able to trace back to who you are, even the hospital. Mm. And then when it goes up further, it's then further anonymized. So then that your age will become part of an age range. Mm. That, that you can't go back. Mm. So when there's a leak, it'll be you or your, your doctor. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And even if, okay. for example, mm -hmm. you have a cardiac situation and you, you see this doctor and then tomorrow you have an orthopedic situation, because the two incidences are not linked, neither those doctors will see each other's records. Mm -hmm. They will only see each other's records if, for example, in a woman's case, she's pregnant and she has a cardiac um, preeclampsia and then maybe, you know, something else. And then the, the two are related to the pregnancy. That will then give all the healthcare professionals looking after her in that context access to those. Mm -hmm. But only the one who created it has edit access. All the others is view. Mm -hmm. um, and so we really thought this out. We spent a lot of time with the stakeholders drilling through everything. And I think what's really important to mention is that one of the co-founders of the organization is a consultant, right, in the UK seasoned medical expert mm -hmm. um, and you know he, he, he's dealt with compliance data compliance personal medical information compliance regulations and things like that and the reason why we chose to seat the organization in the uk is to make sure that we sound the message that you know I, iso 27001 gdpr we are really taking the regulations seriously because that's our business our business is to create a patient-centric 
platform, if you don't trust it, mm. there's no point. So your trust as a patient is paramount mm. to us. Mm. And the buy-in of the health practitioners as you know, users and of the health establishments as customers mm. is paramount. And, and you know, for us to have the encouragement and support of governments and IGOs and NGOs, as yes, you're enabling us to do our business better, to change our lives, to impact, to raise and influence whole countries and economies, that's really important for us and really every stakeholder in the, in the ecosystem. Mm. So for us, doctors are not more important than patients. Mm. You know, we're speaking to everyone with the same level of we are interested in you, mm. we want you to engage with us for, so that we can build you a solution that's really fit for purpose. Mm. All right. Sounds, sounds good. Um, but if the, the, the doctor at the other end does not know that it's me, Kojo Brace, mm -hmm. how will he know that I'm the one whose information is in front of him? Because when you arrive, so you book an appointment. If you walk in, you can use near field technology. So you, the same way you use Bluetooth mm -hmm. to find out what's near, you, he has his or she has their app. You have your app and they'll be like, oh, I'm near. I'm seeing doctor this. I, I agree, consent, open my records to him. Oh. Okay, get in then. Yeah. All right, uh, look, your final words just before we wrap up this conversation. Right, um, just to say that mm. um, Ghana is ripe for technology in mm. medicine. We are excited about what's going on and we are calling on all the stakeholders who are partnering with us coming in tonight and tomorrow to come in, share their ideas. Let's all get on board. Let's get this working. And at the end of the day, the biggest beneficiaries are the Ghanaian people. The patient is at the center of it all. Mm. And the future is now. So let's get on board. All right. Isabel. Yes, very, very excited. Mm. Really, really looking forward to tonight and tomorrow. Really looking forward to this having actual real mm. impact. Mm. And I think the look you have in your eyes mm. that I see whenever we tell someone mm. about this mm. and it, their eyes light up mm. when they understand the power mm. that this has to transform an entire country, mm. communities, regions, cities. And so really, really excited. This mm. is my first of many trips to Ghana mm. and uh, I hope okay. to become a uh, uh, Ghanaian. Ghanaian by proxy very soon. <laughs> I might need a Ghanaian name. Yeah, we'll give you one. I mean, uh, you're, you're Isabel Uguch. Yeah, I was born on a Monday. Does that oh, mean? Ajua, good. You got a good day. <laughs> Great. Because I was born on a Monday as well. So we'll, we'll take already. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, Dr. Jean uh, Nyangsen. Uh, she is an occupational health uh, physician and executive director of Scope Plus Group and Isabel Uguchuku. Ajua uh, Ugochigu uh, is with MedTech Solutions. All right, uh, ladies, thank you so much for passing through. Thank you very There's much. There's still pause. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back. Stay with us. Well, I was overly excited by the information and didn't want to leave the show, but well, you know what? I have to go for other, another show to come your way. It's been exciting being with you. There's more news on myjawonline.com. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace. Let's meet on Prime at 7. Thanks.